I'm going to introduce uh, John Silver, who is a member of the Silver family and who has, I guess you could say, steeped himself in the lore. <laughs> and uh, so he's going to tell you a little, little bit about it. We also have, there's a video that we, we, we couldn't show the last time, and we can show it after everybody. If you feel want to hang around, we can set it up, I think. Can we not? Uh, we can set the video up. It's about a 20-minute video you can watch as well. So in any event, uh, let me go ahead and introduce to you John Silver. Like I said, my name's John Silver. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as similar to the first one as I can. I may, I may just total, totally run off the rails here in a minute, but we'll try to keep it close. Um, first thing, like I told the first ones, uh, I tend to get a little nervous. Speaking in public is not one of my strong suits, but if I get tongue-tied, I'll try to get it rolled back up and get back on track. So. Um, <laughs> I do get a little nervous. I wore a red shirt, so you couldn't tell how red my face was. But anyway, um, another one is I'm not an expert on this stuff. I am a family descendant that has been lucky enough to have a lot of our family history written down over the years. Uh, that's what I go back to is what's been written down. And David, you can't say, I may ask you a bunch of questions here in a minute. We got, we got more silver family descendants over here, so I can ask you if we have to. Um, we've had a lot of history written down. Anything you see in here pertaining to the silver family has been written down over the years. Um, a lot of you that know much about Mitchell County and, and the silver name would remember Wayne Silver. Um, how many of you remember Wayne? That was my uncle. So... I've been around this all my life. I uh, saw a lot of things that Wayne did. Monroe Thomas was another one. Uh, he was responsible for gathering a lot of this stuff. Uh, Monroe's mother was a silver, was David's daughter. Uh, so that's where a lot of this history comes from. I'll start out the same way I did with the first group and kind of give you a little bit of our background of where we come from. Um, we can trace the silver name back to Germany about to about 1540. Um, so we've known a lot about the Silvers throughout the years. First one was George Silver Sr. that came over here in 1749 on a ship called the Speedwell. Uh, another ship that is on. Um, surname was probably Silber, S-I-L-B-E-R, or Silberstein, uh, along those lines, translated when he got off the ship um, to Silver. Now, just like I told the first group, we're going to do this a little bit interactive, so I'm going to ask questions, so you got to talk a little bit. <laughs> there was three ways you could come to America in that time. What were some of them? Indentured servant. Okay, servant. What else? Soldier. Soldier. Uh, yeah, we probably could, but there's three main ways. Somebody? Farm. We got, we got one. What? Farm. Farm, no. Pay your way. Pay your way. Pay your way. Indentured servant. What did that indentured servant mean? Somebody basically sponsored you. Yeah. Or when you get off that ship, you were sold. Um, they were wealthy enough to pay their own way over here. Uh, when they got over here, settled in Pennsylvania, then finally in Fredericksburg, Maryland, was where George Silver Sr. ended up. Uh, he had one son, uh, George Silver Jr., He's buried in this cemetery up here. Served in the Revolutionary War under George Washington and the German militia. Uh, served until the end. Why did he end up down here? Don't answer, David. <laughs> uh, you heard it a minute ago, too. Now you three can't answer it either. Somebody that didn't hear the first one. How'd, you, how'd they get down here? Land grant. Land grant. That's how they ended up here. It was a land grant. Um, some of you may know it, some of you probably don't. There's a house right down here, green tin roof. It's a house they built when they got here, around 1800, late 1790s, 1800. House is still standing. Uh, house has been passed down, it's always been in the Silver family. Nobody else has ever owned it, and passed down to generation to generation. Um, like I said, George Silver Jr. is buried up here. His son, and this is this is my lineage. His son was Jacob, buried up here. Then David, you can see on the wall, David was a Confederate 
uh, veteran. Then Will, little Will was my great granddad. Uh, my granddad was William George Silver Sr. He's buried up there and then my dad is still living. So all my descendants are buried right up here in this cemetery. Um, that's where there's enough history in that itself. But for some reason, <laughs> we can't seem to get past Frankie and Charlie. <laughs> so that's what we're talking about. Um, and, and like I said, I'm trying, trying to keep it as close to the first one as I can, and it's going to be a lot of questions and answers. Um, how old were they when this happened? What year was it? Somebody tell me what year it was. They didn't hear it the first time. 1831. 1831. How old were they? Does anybody know? 18 and 19. 18 and 19. How old was the daughter? 13 months. Uh, does anybody know what day it was that he was killed? December 22nd. So drops before Christmas. Um, and I think that's one of the one of the things why there's so much intrigue still about it is because there's so much mystery involved with it. Um, there's always been since that day there has been a lot of speculation as to what happened, why did she do it by on her own? Did she have help? There's only two people that knew what went on that night, and they're both dead. So we really don't know. Um, and I think that's why there's so much intrigue with it this long after that. Um, December 22nd, it was right before Christmas. Um, I asked the first group, how was Christmas at that time in the 1830s? What did they do at Christmas time? Was it one day, two days like it is now, or what was it? Twelve days long. Yeah, it was a long time. They didn't do just a couple of days. So, what had he been doing up until that time? He'd been getting ready for Christmas. Because they didn't do a whole lot. They didn't do work. Um, that day, he just got done cutting a cord of wood. Now, somebody tell me how big a cord of wood is. Robbie, how big is a cord of wood? Yeah, I'm just to know. <laughs> there you go. It's a lot of wood. Uh, regardless of the fact, there's always been speculation as to somebody tell me your reasons why it happened. He was mean to her. He was mean to her. What else? Came home drunk. What else? She had, she had a boyfriend. She had a boyfriend. He had a girlfriend. What else? There's others. There, there's others. What else? Her family was going to move west, and she wanted to go, but he didn't want to. She was going to take the daughter. All those things are what? Speculation. Speculation. There's no documented evidence of any of those things anywhere. Um, that's some of the things that you really don't know why it happened. All we know is that it did happen. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, there's been, how many books have been written about it? There's been a bunch. How many movies? How many plays? There's been a bunch, and everybody takes a different angle. And that's one of the reasons, I forgot to tell the first group, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to show this video, um, but I was surprised that there's so many people here, which is good, though. Um, it's a different angle towards it. Um, the last book that I know of was Perry Dean Young, I think, wrote the last book about it. And it was, basically, she was unjustly hung. I don't know if she was or not. Um, you know, she confessed to it. We, she didn't say why, as to say, you know, exactly why, but she did confess to it. So, um, more questions. Why is there three graves? Okay. Uh, what did they find first? There's somebody said it over here. Ashes and bones out of the fireplace. So everybody should know what happened. What what that night what happened? She killed him. She tried to burn him. Okay. Your about 18 years old, it's the dead of winter, you have a 13 month old child, you've killed your husband, 
you're going to burn a cord of wood and burn his body in one night. Is it possible? By yourself. I don't know. On top of that, I'm sure David's probably heard this. She walked almost a half a mile to the river in a pair of his boots to break a hole in the ice to make it look like he'd fell in the river and didn't make it home and then backtracked backwards. Uh, All in one night? Okay. How long after... Did she actually do that? Is that, is that, is that established? It's been written, hasn't it, David? There's, there's a written account of it, too, so chances are it could help. Um, what? One of the questions I've always had is, why did, when did they start suspecting her? Somebody tell me. Now, it was Christmas. When did they start suspecting her? How long after was it? that she was arrested. Three weeks. You all want to be quiet. Three weeks. It, it, was, three, it was three weeks after. Um, so it was a length of time. Um, there's been some mystery, there, again, there's mystery and everything, but there's been some mystery as to how it happened that night. Somebody had said that he came home drunk. Somebody said that he came home drunk, had a gun, was going to kill her, and she killed him. Now, from all accounts, he was probably about six foot tall. He was an outdoorsman. He stayed, and it wasn't uncommon for him to stay gone for a week, two weeks at a time on his rounds. Um, he just got through chopping a cord of wood with an axe, so he was probably a pretty strong fella. She was smaller in stature, so... Them saying that he threatened and then she killed him, I think that was, might have been just a little bit far-fetched. Um, especially with an axe. Now, if she had shot him, that might have been a little different. But all accounts that we have was he was asleep when she hit him the first time with the axe. Did the first blow kill him? No. Nope. So, there, there again, there's all the mystery involved with it. Um, it was about three weeks after that they suspected her. Why did they start suspecting her? Fireplace. Fireplace. Yes, before that, there were some other things that went on before they done that. They, she, from the day, from the time that they started suspecting her, a story could not be told the same any time after that. Every, every case that you see of, of her trying to tell what happened was totally different. She started act, getting nervous, started acting nervous. The family started suspecting something was going on after they didn't see him for about a week, and especially it being Christmas. So they started doing some checking, some investigating. They actually got a, what you call a soothsayer, to try to find where he was at. So they actually took him to the house. Now. Granddad was born in 1914, and he did not know where the house was at. Uh, knew the general area up here on this ridge somewhere, but he did not know the exact location of where the house was. Um, but they had took the soothsayer to the, to the house, and he basically kept saying, he's here. So that's when they started doing the investigation of the fireplace, the first confession from Frankie was when she came in the house and found them pulling the boards up, floorboards up, and found a lot of evidence of blood under the floorboards. That was the first confession. Each confession after that was a different story. Can you tell us some of the stories? Well, just, you know, and a lot of people want to speculate that there was abuse, different things like that. The allegations of abuse didn't come until after the trial. Why didn't she ever go on the witness stand? It's one of the things that's involved with it that they really don't understand why they didn't do that. There's just a number, it was just inconsistencies in the story is why there's you know there again it's a lot of mystery involved. Do you remember any of the actual the actual things she said you know that she that, you know that what well first? one was that he had threatened to kill her. There were things like that. One now there again like I asked the first group. What kind of day and time was this in the 1830s? What were women thought of? They were a possession. 
I read somewhere there was a number of different times that many killed wives just to get another one and nothing was ever done to them. And there's the first account of a wife killing a husband and they're going to hang her for it. So, you, you know, there's a lot of different circumstances around it that are, you know, that make it a mystery still to this day. Um, how long, how long was it after the murder before she was actually hung? Does anybody know? Two years. Two years. Why was it over two years? She escaped. She did escape one time. Did anybody know that? No. She actually escaped. Um, somebody had actually broke in through the jail window. They cut her hair to make her look like a boy. They actually made it to Henderson County. How did they get caught? Does anybody know? Documented story, too. Sure. <laughs> what was it, Dave? The sheriff came out and said, Hello, Ricky. They, didn't, they asked what her name, what his name was. And she said, my name's Tommy. And another member of the party said, yes, her name is Tommy. <laughs> that's, that's what got her called. <laughs> so back to jail. Why, not only did she escape, but why was it two years before she was actually hung? Appeals. Trying to get a pardon. Um... Probably would have got the pardon if there wouldn't have been two governors involved. There was a governor that was probably going to pardon her, and I think he ended up being moved to the director of commerce or saying anyway. They switched positions. Another governor come in, and it just kind of fell through the, the cracks, and that's why a pardon was never never granted to her. Um, where was she buried? Top of Washburn Mountain, <laughs> out of Cox's Creek. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan. Why was she buried in Morgan? Was she was hunting. It was in July. Yeah. What's the weather like around here in July? Mm -hmm. They were actually bringing her back here, but they couldn't. So they ended up burying her. Now, have you ever heard the story that he had three different graves dug for her? There was actually probably more than three graves for her at one time. And why would that have been? This is... Does anybody know? One of the things was medical examiners at that time didn't have any female cadavers. They didn't want her to... They didn't want them to have her. So that was one of the reasons why. But he was trying to get back here, but they didn't make it back because of the, you know, what has happened to the body. There, there's, there's a number of different mysteries that's, you know, is around it. I think that's why it's lasted as long as it has. Was she the first woman ever to be hanged in North Carolina? No. No. Was she the first documented woman to be hanged in North Carolina? That's where it gets it. There was probably a lot of women that were hung before that time, but she was the first one that was actually tried and convicted and then to, to hang. Um, questions? No. Did she? Did she ever? I, mean, I, I thought. No, I thought I read something one time that's supposed to have been her writing. Did she actually commit anything to paper about about her story? More than likely. Now, David was a school teacher. Charlie probably had some form of education. There probably wasn't a whole lot. Um, um, Probably could read and write a little bit. Now her, I don't know. To, to the extent of being able to write a poem like that, I would not think so. What I have heard is it was a jailer at the time that was helping her write the poem. Um, really don't think that she would be that far advanced in education to be able to write that much. Do you think that's her? That's actually her thoughts though? Or her? It's hard to say. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> yes. to the door. What's that? What happened to the child? The daughter actually went back to the Stewart family, grew up, married, had kids. The video, and that's, I'm presenting it from the silver side of it. Uh, there's a lot of writings that keeps up with the Stewart side of it. The video, and that's one of the reasons I was going to show the video was it gives a different angle to why it possibly could have happened. There again, anybody that comes up with a different angle than what actually happened, and we don't know what actually happened and why, 
it's some speculation to it. Was it the truth? It, somebody may have hit it right on the head, but we don't know that for sure. Uh, but there it, she got, she ended up marrying and having kids. Um, it details it a little bit in that video. So. Did she not grow up in Ella J, Georgia? Uh, I want to say it was in McDowell County where she ended up, um, but I think that video tells some more of it. A lot of her descendants are still around, so, you know, Larry Fortner, how many of you know Larry Fortner? Larry Fortner is, some of his descendants are the Stuarts. He knows a lot of information on that, and there, there's a lot of them around here, so. Another question? How close was Charlie and Frankie's nearest neighbor? Well, the house was right here. His dad's house was right here, and it was just back. If you're out in the cemetery, you can look up on the ridge right up here, and it was behind that somewhere in that vicinity up there was where the house was. So it wasn't too far. Did you ever say where she's buried? She is buried in Burke County, now current day Burke County, down around Morganton, somewhere in there. It's uh, I think there's about three grave sites there at that where she's buried. Is there a marker? I've heard it is for hers. Like it, Horn Tavern Road or something. So, like that. and that was and that was a place where they had stopped on their travels here. Uh, there is a marker there. I'm almost positive that there's one there. Is that the one that's on the Dewalt Farm? Yeah. I, I, it may be. I'm not sure. I have never actually been there, so I don't really know. Maybe explain this. Why does why does she have three graves? Also? She she does not have three. She okay. had one. Her dad had prepared oh. three graves for her, so they wouldn't know exactly where they put the body. But it ended up not getting to that point. So. Do you know where the other two are? What's that? The other two graves. No, that was just at that time they had prepared. You know. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know where they were. No, I do, I do not know where they would have been. So there were three graves, but she wasn't buried in any of the three. Yeah, right. Didn't make it to that point to where she could get back to somebody could figure out where they buried her. So, do you yes. know where the lo location of the house is? Well, like I said, my granddad was born in 1914, and he did not know where the house was at. He knew the general area, but any remnants of the house were not there at that time. So there's a lot of people who say they kind of know where it's at, but... If they do, I'd, I'd like to see it too. So I don't. I, we don't really know where the house is at. So, so. what's in the three graves that Char of, of Charlie? What what? Bones out of the fireplace, torso and head. Part of the head, I think, was buried under a stump, and then maybe some <coughs> part of the legs, other bones at other times that were found that were not consumed <coughs> in the fire. So they found three different times. They found body parts, so that's why there's three graves for him instead. And at that time, they thought there you couldn't open a grave back up, and so that's why there's three different ones. Did a brother try to help her escape? How many did they arrest at the when they arrested her? Three. Three. Who was it? Her mother and her brother Blackston. Yep. And then they pleaded not guilty, and then they turned them loose. So. That's probably who helped her escape. So they could have helped her kill her, as far as anybody knows. There again, you are a small and stature woman. You've killed your husband. You're, you've got a 13 month old child. You're going to try to burn your husband's body, uh, chop him up, which I've never had to do that. So I don't know how, how hard that would be, but it couldn't be very easy. And you're going to do that in a night or two? Tell me if you can do it by yourself. Now, how far away did they live from where they lived? From Charlie and Frank River? The other uh, conference. The Stewarts. The Stewarts cross the river. Oh, okay. So not far. So not that far. It wouldn't be, you know, it's not that far for them to get there. But, you know, there again, you have multiple theories of why it happened. You also have multiple theories that she wasn't actually the one that killed him. That it was her brother or her dad that killed him. You, you, have, you have a lot of different theories both ways. Um, so like I said, you really don't know. We don't know what happened that night. So. I read that when she was um, getting ready to hang, they asked her if she had anything to say. 
and she, her father told her to keep it in and not say anything. Is that documented true? There's a, more than just when she was to be hanged. There was other instances he'd said the same thing. So why would her dad say that? I mean, and if he was telling her to, you know, alleged abuse and different things like that, not to say, why would you as a father would say, don't, you know, don't know why I'd say that, but it just it adds to that mystery, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, the Stewart family at that time were they not sort of an outlaw group involved in a lot of illegal or <laughs> that there there is I mean there is some that's what was said. I don't know if I don't know for sure if there was documentation of things like that, but that was what the rumor was at that time. So, you know, I don't know. Um, there again, I, I mean, it just, I think that's why there's so much intrigue with it still to this day is because of the mystery of everything that goes along with it. Is there a transcript of the trial? Yes, there is. That has been researched and researched and researched. There is all kinds of documentations about the trial. Is it Burke County? Burke County. Is it online anywhere? I don't know if it's online. Do you can... Google Frankie and Charlie Silver and see what you find. There is all kinds of articles that you can read on it. Um, there is, I mean, there's all kinds of information, both sides, speculation, documents. Uh, the court documents are there. Uh, you just have to research them and find them. Somebody else had one, I think. Anybody else? Yeah, I got one more. Uh, now, uh, I used to be a lawyer, so I know that the statute of limitations on slander has, has gone past, and you've given us a straight version, but you've got to have your own uh, personal... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably a good combination of both. I would say that there probably could have been some jealousy there. Um, at that time, Moving west would not be something out of the ordinary, and with all of his family here, you got to understand. Charlie's mother died at childbirth. His dad married again and had twelve more <coughs> children, I think. So he had a close family. I could understand him not wanting to leave. Probably could have been some jealousy. Probably could have been a number of those things together, but I don't know that for sure. All I know is that she killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, somebody killed him. My my opinion is my opinion. If you want my opinion on it, is this: she killed him. She did, she was the one that took the first blow and killed him. Probably he stammered around and it took him a while to die, but he died. And then she needed help, and then from there on they helped her. That's my opinion, but that, and that's just an opinion. Somebody else. Uh, your great grandfather, Will Silvers, told my granddaddy that that they did want to move west and that Charlie wouldn't go. And my grandmother, uh, uh, Woody, her, she was a Thomas. She, uh, her uncle, Mike Hughes, told me that that Frankie's daddy was there with him that night when he come in and when he got done eating, he said, "I'm beat. I think I lay down." And she said, I fixed a pallet for you by the fireplace. Thought you might want to take a nap. She got ready to go to bed. I never know why anybody might want to take a nap. And they got ready to go to bed. But when he went to sleep, he claimed that she drove back on him three times and he'd smile at her in his sleep. And she took the first blow and then runs up to the bed and her daddy done the rest of it. <laughs> One of the tales. One of the tales. One of the many. Somebody else? Uh, yes, since women back then were considered not considered very much property, did she have a lawyer at the trial? There was a lawyer representing her. Um, I want to say a young. I think he was a young. But I'm not exactly sure on that, but she did have a lawyer representing her. Anybody else? Could this video you're talking about, could you could mention, could they have a link? I think, I think it's what we're going to try to do with is, 
I think it got all of us that we had as many people here as we did. Um, so we will probably try to do that. What I'm going to try to do also is, if you want to see that here in a minute, we'll try to get that playing also. But we probably will try to get a link on there. I suggested that earlier. We could, you know, see that. Yes. From what I, a couple of things. One is slide of hand. Somebody just somewhere along the way put silvers, put an S on the end of it, nobody noticed it. Now my great granddaddy, Will, his tombstone marker up here has an S on it. And I've jumped on my dad for years. We need to change that. But <laughs> what I've been finding out is Civil War. Um, Northern sympathizers and Southern. And that's where a lot most of your Yancey County silver, what are they? Silvers. Um, McDowell County. David's brother at the time, I think it was John, moved to McDowell County. Most of the silver in McDowell County right along these lines. Um, there's anybody with the name silver, that's where they come from. Um, so a lot of that was Civil War. It's what I've been finding out. Anything else? Any others? Your um, great grandfather that was there, descendant that was Revolutionary War veteran. Where's he? You say he's buried. He's here. buried right here. Yes. There's a white picture of it on the wall. There's a big white marble monument up there. And you're more than welcome to go look at the cemetery. There is a marker up there for Charlie's three graves. Now, how many of you have already been up to the cemetery? How many unmarked stones are up there? <laughs> there again, we don't know if that's the three graves of his or not, but somebody said it was, so we're rolling with it. <laughs> when you said the silver and silvers, and then you say Civil War, are you referring to part of the Confederate, part of the Union? Yes. And which was which? Did you ask me a question? I should, yeah, I should answer, but I'm, I, you know? Well, uh, Yancey County was mostly compared. That's what I was thinking too. Mitchell County was mostly north. Yeah. And so which is the silver? The silver is silver is the most Mitchell. Yancey County is silver. Confederate. No. Mitchell was you. Yeah. Mitchell what? Some of them were. Some of them were. Robbie knows a lot about Civil War. We'd ask Robbie that. Anything else? How were people executed? Did they throw a rope over a tree or the build a scaffold? I think they actually had gallows on this one. But I'm not there again. I, I wasn't around in 1833, so I don't really know. I, I, it, I think it was gallows, but I'm not sure. I think Cole said that. I think it did too. Well, John, you might mention the bits and pieces in Yancey County because it formed right as this was finished. Well, see, and that's the thing. The house that's down here, it's been in three counties, but it's never been moved. Yep. How do you do that? How do you do that? When they first started the house, it was Burke County. Then Yancey County, now modern day Mitchell County. So the house has been in three counties, but never been moved. Anything else? This was the best county. <laughs> No, we got to say Mitchell on that. <laughs> Is somebody in the family still living? It's the, nobody lives in it. It's not been lived in in probably, probably 25, 30 years. It is still owned by a silver descendant. Um, currently for sale, which I don't agree with, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. But it, it's, uh, that's where Charlie grew up. It's where David, it's where all my descendants, a lot of them grew up. So. It's been handed down from generation to generation. Anything else? Do the video. We want to do the video? Yes. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Yes.